What's going on, everybody? Captain Robert crew here for Stormforged, <laughs> episode 38. I didn't have my cheat to look at. I had to go off my memory. <laughs> I got a... Uh, it's, it's mayo brain rot. What can I say? I, Mayo Forge. Mayo Forge. <laughs> oh, no. No. What you, don't, what you don't know is that in Stormforge, one of the key components of making crafting mm. magical items is mayo. Mm. Um, <laughs> you. I, when we get to Stormforge, I am taking... <laughs> <laughs> There it is. It, I love I that it's in shitty my... aerial font too. That makes it even. <laughs> can, can you get Comic Sans? Is that? <laughs> oh God. Oh. I am the lead graphics designer on Mail Forge, and because graphics <laughs> design is my passion, we're using Papyrus. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Find some bubble letters. That'll make it really slap. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. Oh my god, it actually looks mm. official. <laughs> oh, wait. oh no. <laughs> oh yeah, I slapped it in that 5e font. <laughs> I gotta ask, Drac, how powerful do you feel right now having just caused all this? <laughs> I. It, well, it probably was I it. I've, Yeah. The title. <laughs> I bring my own pain. <laughs> <laughs> this is all concerned apes marketing, okay? <laughs> This is nothing yeah, yeah. but but his Brilliant. brilliance. <laughs> well he done. He did so right. <laughs> yeah, I made my stream title last night, Don't Drink Mayo. The debacle that occurred with every new person joining in. It's just like, well, why not? It's like, what are you talking about? What do you Don't mean, mayo? why not? <laughs> why not? You didn't give an answer, Sam. You actually <laughs> just never gave an answer. Why not, Sam? Because I don't want you to. That's it. <laughs> Today's don't about me. <laughs> don't drink cheap off-brand mayo is all I have to say. If you're gonna go, exactly. like, real mayonnaise or bust. Get a top shelf it. shit. <laughs> so like mayo light is that like the equivalent of diet mayo? Or yeah, you, you just don't want to like that's going down the, a pathway of lying to yourself. Is what yeah. what that is like? If you're going to if you're going to indulge and have some uh, have some mayonnaise, have some mayonnaise. Let's let's not lie and create this this cancerous abomination just because you want to have more mayo than what you should really have in a week. Temperance <laughs> with real. To the person who's tuning into the YouTube VOD inevitably, and this is the first ever Captain Robert video they've watched, I promise you it is only like this about every once in every 20 episodes. Well, this is episode one of Mayo Forge, so it's their first time. <laughs> we've true, we've yeah. mayoed up new characters. It's... Oh, oh my God. No one endorsed uh, the pun you may combination. You mayo see your way out. I mayo see my way out. <laughs> meow. <laughs> meow. Meowskin. Oh, stop. That's no. the meow sound. No. <laughs> Ooh, meowskin. Meowskin. Me meowskin. Uh. <laughs> Ray was like, I'm going to TPK. I'm out. I leave. We, everyone, <laughs> everyone's four already. It should be an RP session. I'm going to find a way to TPK. You <laughs> thought you were going home today. Well, yeah, I'm sleeping. Suddenly. Eats you all. He's here waiting with a jar of mayo. That's when I realized I made a critical error by causing Mayo Forge to be a thing. Is that Yahtzee Ben? Who was that? Is Robo Anonymous the silhouette of the voice now? If anybody has any special announcements they will make while I'm in witness protection, please do so now. Anonymous. I want to die. In a video game. A mayo deus? Well, we can't all have what we want. Oh my! No, did you just did you just mayo the 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 the, uh, the arch devil himself? <laughs> no, I didn't. I was as mayo deus. Come on, no, we can't do. Oh, this. that was good though. Just say yes hey. and take the credit. Well, I was mayo deus. So I'm very funny. Rock me, mayo deus. All right. <laughs> My little mayoites. Who has announcements they want to let the no. community know about before we get started? <laughs> no. Mayo, I go first. And good night, everybody. That was Stormforge. <laughs> <laughs>
no, that was Mayo Forge. That was Mayo Forge. That's <laughs> now we're back for Storm Forge. That's we're we're about to be with correct stream title. <laughs> This Make is it its it. own separate video. It's <laughs> <laughs> really Mayo confused the actually, algorithm. It's the underground secret series that everybody is oh. raving about. But you need a friend of a friend to refer you first, so the guy on the door will actually let you in. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's like the cow world in Diablo. Yeah, so we love that. that. Moo moo moo. Mayo. Alright, moo moos. <laughs> Let's get through announcements, my friends. Ed is dying. Sillies are gone. Ed, Ed, is, Ed is walking I have. away. <laughs> You've killed Ed. Ed, professionalism. S professionalism? Yeah, professionalism. Oh, sorry. Sure. I get to go to. Oh, sure. Where are we? We're trying to swim right now. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and skip announcements, and we're going to go right into <laughs> sponsors. <laughs> Have done all along <laughs> in the end it would have been the sensible decision <laughs> yep yep hey you know what sometimes you just gotta be the adult uh pick it up where we left off last week with you all literally swindling a god faced with the threat of yan c bin and his cult of howling hatred lufia and mishkin were able to dupe the god Mishkin giving him an absolutely unimportant ring from the past. Claiming it to be treasure beyond his imagination with a natural one. He took that offering. Teleporting you all back to the skyport to dispense of the howling hatred. Though things got difficult with multiple cloud dragon thunderous breaths. You guys were able to persevere. We pick back up with you all standing in the rain, having vanquished Yan C. Ben and saved not only this airport, but the merchants and the people on them. The scene is y'all's. So, Listo. I was going to say, I think Callisto, I think still very much in the warden headspace, immediately starts moving towards any of the ships still docked with people on it, or the building proper um, down south of the airport. I'm just checking out, checking in on everyone. If there's anyone's hurt, if any siblings are hurt, um, injured, if they need any aid, sending them to Lelufia if they do need anything beyond just patching up. <laughs> um, honestly, probably, and I, honestly, because again, You've all been deputized, as far as being at least very least um, wooden deputies. If you have um, healing magics, please send them to you as well. Um, very much being like, we need to take care of these people, and make sure everyone's okay and safe. Yeah, I mean, you can send people to Kaiva, but I don't know how many people are going to line up willingly to be healed by weird ass buggy boy. If they're desperate enough. That's a fair point. As people are running around the air docks, um, looking up at the skies, what... Because I know we saw a face and a hole punch its way through the clouds. Uh, does anything seem to be lowering over us at this point? No, Lelufia has cleansed any presence of Yancey Ben inside this storm, and it has come to a gentle... just hard rain the intense wind and thunder and lightning have all really calmed down from where it was to where you guys were literally forced to port here 
or the potential of your vessel not being able to make it. Things have changed. Mishkin is going to wait until Callisto has finished speaking with everyone, understanding how important this duty is, but when Callisto has a moment, Mishkin is just going to gesture him over um, in his own time. Yeah. I think I think they'll notice that you want to speak, so I think just after speaking to them, another civilian or maybe someone who's kind of the head of this port, they'll say, give me a moment, and we'll head over to you, Mishkin. You wanted to talk? Yes. Um, how much do you know about Yancy Bin? Um, I mean, how much do I know, Robert? Go ahead and roll a history or religion check. You're the same for me. Yeah. I'll do history 12 Yancy Ben hasn't been a part of the zeitgeist in your lifetime nor has there been an ever looming threat of anything to challenge Stormforge's air superiority. So this is a very new development. Um, honestly, beyond the name and the very clear domain, as I gesture to the skies, not much. Well, given what he was saying when Lulufia and I disappeared, it looks like his domain is something he wishes to reclaim. And Mishkin looks at the crowds of people around. I don't know how safe these people are here, nor how safe Stormforge will continue to be. For all the dangers that already exist within it presently, it seems that external eyes have fallen upon it also. He intends to tear Stormforge out of the sky and return it to whence it came. Dealing with so much already. I know. Okay. Um, I think the most we can do is let whoever's in charge of the port now um, advise that they may be if they can go to Stormforge at the very least have some kind of protection there with the wardens and the sky sky guards and then when we are at Stormforge we report this information to the rest of the wardens this with Yansibin and everything else we've learned about what's going on in Stormforge. Um, I think we can... There are a lot of people we need to protect, and I'm not sure how much we can do without help. I agree. But... We also have enemies. Enemies whose end goals may lie in opposition of one another. Whether that can be leveraged is another matter, but I do not think that the Silent Gear, the Voshborg, Yancy Bin, these three forces would necessarily make for natural bedfellows if a witch can be driven between all three. Just a thought. My fur is still a little frizzled from the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, I imagine the storm's going to pass soon, so hopefully that 
gets better. I do want to ask, what do you, what do you think this wedge will be? Are you suggesting we turn him towards Yansibin? Turn Yansibin towards them? All I know is that Yansibin's eye is already fixed upon Stormforge, which happens to be where our enemies lie currently. Now, naturally, the city itself is in danger. It is just an initial thought, nothing more, but perhaps if we can guide the anger of a powerful god against our enemies, who appear to be making their own. I do not imagine that Yansibin would take kindly to rival deity. This takes a moment. Arms have just crossed over their chests as they take this in. No, I think that's... I think that's honestly a very good idea. Well, I'm not a fan of the whole enemy of my enemy is a friend. The enemy of my enemy can definitely be a tool, at the very least. Make no mistake. And Mishkin looks in the direction of Fane. I too do not believe friendship can be found in enemies. I will speak with Lilithia to see what we can do. I do think this is a good idea, but it's going to all depend on how we see this information. Fane is going to stay silent and just trace his eyes back and forth to your conversation. This conversation can wait. After all, we need to get the two of you back home to your son. Yeah. God, yeah, we do. Oh, shit. Um, and they're gonna, <laughs> the moment you bring that, they're gonna turn and rush to Lilithia. <laughs> you would see her helping somebody and hearing your very wet running footsteps across from all the puddles across the, the platform. She would look up and await for you to say something. Uh, are you kind of like very much like uh, trying not to in interpose, but just goes, are you can I pull you away for a moment? He, sure, give me a minute. And she's going to hand this person the gauze. Just, just hold that for a quick moment. And she gets up and walks over to where you lead her. Um, I'll be honest, a lot has happened. Mishkin just updated me on everything that went down with Yancey Ben, and they honestly probably a very interesting plan, which I think I'll run by everybody once we're all together and okay. finish with this particular mess on the pot. Yeah, but, we've still got a lot of people to take care of. Yes. I also just remembered, well, re-remembered, it's a son's birthday in two weeks. It has not been that long. It has. Oh, God. You, get everybody. We've got to get out of here. Okay. <laughs> I'll go finish up with these people over here. You gather the horses, and we'll go. Okay. <laughs> and she runs back. <laughs> her motherly instinct is like, oh, my gosh, I haven't been there for my son. <laughs> so she, she goes to finish up with all the people she was helping before joining wherever eventually the group reconvenes. Yeah, Calista would still finish off, um, like, giving directions and I think talking to probably whoever the, the master of this port is and let them know that it's probably best for them to maybe dock on Stormforge for a while until we are able to guarantee that everything is safe, that the region of the sky is safe. Um, but once that is 
going across, they will gather everyone if they can. Go ahead and make a medicine check, Lolly. I break their legs. <laughs> In half. <laughs> Why are your medicine so low? I don't know. Because that's not what it all Plus one. It was one. It was one of my highest stats. But it was a different system, so. You do not have any proficiency on medicine at the moment, which is funny. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go ahead and add that onto your sheet since that's literally what you do. No, no, let me break it in. <laughs> Oh, don't don't worry. The proficiency isn't going to save you from the beautiful. She's so frantic and just thinking about getting home. It does. It weighs like, he heavy on you, medicine. your own personal obligations. So the the triage is a bit more short than what you would normally do. Trying to pass off some of the responsibilities to the individuals that run the skyport themselves. Luckily, because of y'all's fast action, there isn't mass damage here and a loss of life. There's some broken boards and some beat up airships. But for the most part, you guys have kept them incredibly safe and the people are thankful. As you walk through, you do get a hero's welcome throughout the entire airport. The amenities are all slowly opening back up as the power comes back on on the inside. Generators running. You guys do have access to anything that you may need inside this small floating city in the sky. Are there any This is an oddly specific thing. Are there any kind of lightning rods around at all? I'm just thinking mm -hmm. Absolutely. To... Okay. I'm going to depending on how big these are, can I harvest a couple of them? Just like obviously that'll put the port in a bit more danger from lightning strike, but I I have I imagine they have yeah. backups and like spares. Yeah. Yeah. Can I take like one of the skyport attendants kind would... of like looks over at you struggling on this very, very attached. Yeah. You need do you need some help over there? I was just uh, investigating this thing. I assume it was to uh, attract lightning away from the port itself. Yeah, I wouldn't touch that. Uh, that's a really bad idea. It's all right. I've had one or two brushes with electricity. I, I don't suppose you have any spare parts lying around at all. Uh, I, our ship might require them yeah yeah just uh, don't uh, uh, just promise me you, you won't touch that thing while I go back and grab some spare parts I promise and if Michigan could be crossing his fingers he probably would be <laughs> you're insane he's gonna walk away and to slowly make his way back he will fetch you uh Go ahead and roll me a 1d4. Hmm. <laughs> it's going to fetch you four, and, and we'll, we'll say that these uh, rods are about uh, about three feet. They're about a meter, meter long each. Okay. As he comes back with a, a stack in his hands about 10 or 15 minutes later. 
Yeah, like like I said, uh, don't touch these things. Even whatever you're gonna do with them. Don't worry, I have been around enough skyports to know not to tempt fate when it comes to the weather. But um, thank you. These are not for me. These are for uh, um, more skilled hands than mine. You want me to drop these anywhere? Um, just over to our ship over there would be. Got it. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Thank we. We all thank you. We would have been goners without you. Well, that's what wardens do, isn't it? He does look down. Are you? You have your badge, uh, prominent. I mean, I'm. So <laughs> He's just a cat with a tarpaulin poncho. <laughs> Roll a persuasion or a deception. Either one with advantage. Just Catman in his cream. Oh God! <laughs> Not again! Right? Oh, are <laughs> oh, you believable? I don't know what we would do without the wardens. Thank you. And as he walks off, Mishkin just looks around at his friends and just whispers to himself. Neither do I. Farouk is going to bring Freak, his golden eagle familiar out of the hole in the ship. And he's going to send him up in the rain and you're going to see him fly off into the distance until he disappears. He too will sit out in the rain for a little bit in his poncho and just kind of look off into the looming storm. First time in a long while that Kaivar's taken a moment to sort of sit and assess and do this um, with some proper rigor. When everyone has been attended to and everyone looks as though they're patched up, or at least everyone who is willing to be treated by a bug, um, Kaivar is going to see if there are any of the... Um, he's going to look around to see if there are any remains of the cloud dragons. Go ahead and roll. Ah, no, there's there was three of them here. There's going to be at least one of them still down on the platform. Yeah, uh, Kaivar is going to go ahead and take a look at them uh, and is then going to take a moment and, as has been done before, um, flick through the pages in his tome until he comes to a blank one and holding one hand out to the remains he allows another page to form letting the memory of this fight and this foe in particular fall into the pages and associate its memory he's also going to see if he can pry some of the scale or anything that can be used as material from uh, what remains. Go ahead and make a survival check. Okay. Uh, hmm. What cards have we got? I feel like this is one of those ones where it'd be real nice to get something. Let me check real quick. I know we have a bunch of inspirations. Chat loaded up with inspirations last time. Thank you, chat. May I? Um, we have uh, six D sixes, sixty eights, forty tens. Is everyone we okay? Don't have any luckies. 
Is, we have uh, eight advantages as well. I'm going to take an advantage if everyone's okay with that. Yes, yeah, you may Hey, thank you. Uh, right. I will also... Oh. Um, I'll mark that down. Yeah. Uh, Robert, this is... I know normally this is allowed in, like, typical nonsense, but I don't know if it's something else. Um, uh, you let me guidance myself, right? Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll hit myself with that guidance and add a 1d4 as well. As uh, taking a look at the page on the book that's just been formed, uh, Kaivar sees it morph into a more sort of well-versed diagram of the anatomy of this dragon. I'll need to roll advantage and add a 1d4 to that, so... Your advantage, advantage. uh, here. Yeah. And here comes a spare 1d4. I know, I can add all the individual bits. But... 17. Unfamiliar. So you're able are... to... Harvest. Nine vials of this cloud dragon's blood. Fifteen teeth. Six bone fragments. And their horns. Are you looking for any actual edible meat? Not edible meat. Uh, if there's loose scales that are clear not to deteriorate, um, I think that's another point of focus. But You have your heart there. set out for the glands on its breath weapon and the scales. Unfortunately, you do not meet the DC and you struggle to be able to harvest those. Eh, bone be bone. It's still pretty good. How big are the uh, bone fragments we're talking about, by the way? Or your size, and you got four arms. Uh, I would say, a, it's a big dragon enough for you to carry with your uh, your own hands probably three three or four feet on either side yeah or to make one very big item or something along those lines Not yeah absolutely tough. yeah okay I will DM you something later but content with that harvest at very least uh, yeah Kaivar is going to try and find a way of um, quickly storing what parts and pieces he can on the ship Farouk will see you struggling with the scales and he will come over and try to add some assistance. First time skinning a dragon, Kaivar! <clears throat> uh, uh, this one Kaivar, yes, but, uh, those before, uh, skin many beast, yes. Kaivar sort of points to the book, and it seems clear that in the past someone's done it within lineage, but not him, not personally. See, we are only as good as the sharp of knife that you have. Twenty-five. Good God. Oof. Let's go for the gold and. Toss me a, a 1d10. Mark that bad boy off. I'm going to see if okay. we can get everything. Plenty. Let's do it. Oh, 31. Yeah. With Farouk's help, you're going to be able to remove the dragon breath pouch. You're going to be able to get some of those dragon scales, 11 in particular. Since we rolled a 31, dragon scales are at a DC 20 on this cloud dragon. 
Oof. So we're gonna get 11 uh, of the harvestable scales. We'll also get the dragon's heart. Good Lord, okay. I'm getting to... huge Skyrim flashbacks. I'm imagining both of you are moving so much slower at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm over encumbered. <laughs> uh, we will also get the this. prized leather of the membrane between the wings as well. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. Uh, enough for it looks like two cloaks at least okay uh i'm gonna need to i'm gonna need to note down all of this uh but hell yeah that's a fantastic harvest oh my god uh you said it was 15 teeth and 11 scales correct yes Okay. Uh, yeah. And See just there, for I'm... your kind of own imagination, there you have been able to harvest um, a large, like, essentially, how I said you had uh, probably about two cloaks worth from the wings. You have that amount of small dragon scales, right? Stuff that could be used for possibly armor or different applications on your body. And then you have those massive, like the big scales, the ones that are like as big as your hand kind of scales, you have those Ooh. individually. So you have some actual sheets of, of scales that can be used for armor or clothing. And then you have these just actual large, hard as steel. Like these are like, they're they're almost like harvesting like Kevlar plates, right? Good God. So the okay. uh, the the Oof. smaller the smaller scales are like chain mail. These are like crazy Kevlar plates. And how many of those did you say? You got eleven oh. of those, and you have mm -hmm. two sheets of the just uh, I would say just call it scale scale mail. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna mute myself so you're not uh, hearing my. Uh, clitter clatter from the keyboard um, <laughs> but yeah seeing all of this uh, Kaivara his eyes are already always wide but they seem to go a little bit wider um, uh, and he starts to calculate how many trips between here and the ship need to be made as he starts to pile things into his arms <laughs> uh, and quietly through the sort of through the psychic fog of nonsense you hear uh, thank you yes this will be put to good use by this one, yes. Fruk just nods, happy to be of help and use his expertise. You're welcome. Uh, he's going to carve himself off just a uh, single scale. One of the single uh, hard scales. Uh, just a reminder, you want to put a uh, uh, kind of connotation note. They are cloud dragons, so they are uh, thunder based. Got it. I'll start editing all that. Good Lord. Uh, yeah, the other group has been points. doing a bunch of harvesting, so I've had the harvesting tables up. So like, yeah, I was ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> They've been chunking out basilisk eyes and taking out all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, I uh, I, I wasn't ready for how in depth that was, but this is like <laughs> this is fantastic. It's, uh, um, I I have also the the different things that can be formed from uh, this uh, to kind of give you a uh, let the creative juices going. If yeah, I, at some point I'd definitely go ahead and look at that. I mean, also I'd make it very clear I'm not keeping this secret from anybody. Like if someone has seen this from within the group, uh, these these are these are not specifically uh, 
bulwark Ivar, so to speak. Like, if you see some nonsense, I'm thinking of you in particular with the stuffed drac and this breath pouch. If you think you can make a gun or a weapon out of this, go wild. Like, do as you do. Uh, yeah. Uh, Farouk is going to take all the, the dragon meat. <laughs> <laughs> Farouk is totally making dragon jerky. There is no doubt about this. He will immediately been cur begin curing it in the hole of uh, Horizon's End. Does Kilthet have no contest against that? <laughs> our, our chef. <laughs> I think he would be giving me a hand. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, it's going to be the best food. Is dragon meat normally eaten in Stormforge? Like, is that something that y'all have had before? That would be a kind of delicacy, and... Yeah. Normally, I think it would be looked, it would be frowned upon. Uh, so, like, whale or shark kind of stuff? Yeah, it would be, like... More than that, right? This is dragons are Yeah, I'm just trying to find regards. relative. Yeah. It all in it entails on how intelligent the the dragon is. Like, white dragon meat when they're more feral in these cases uh obviously like you're just not letting it go to waste but uh i think it would be frowned mm -hmm. upon if you were uh like hey i got some like uh hunting. i got some brass right <laughs> you know some of the kinder and i i don't always stick to the canon of chromatic dragons there, there can be in our world there can be good and evil dragons of any variety uh, I don't stick to the strict D and D canon okay. where only metallic uh, have savory properties versus you know these are the evil dragons. Any of them can be on the sliding scale. Uh, this is more of just like kind of waste not want not. <laughs> Dylan, hashtag all dragons are delicious. <laughs> this is I, you know what and I realize I realize why my entire community tagged me in a delicious in dungeon before I saw it they were like this is you are you are Sinji like this is you and I, I realize this now that I'm just an extension of monster hunter cooking wherever I go <laughs> I can hear the music now you know oh I saw there are intense cooking scenes and uh dragon uh Dragon's uh, Dogma? Yeah, Dragon's Dogma 2. Like, I'm here for it. Wait, Dylan, you've been watching Delicious in Dungeon as well? Do I know this? So many people watch Ashes watch it. Ashes watch it. <laughs> he has a walk that is an adamantine shield that is a dwarf. It is what? Oh, it's so good. It is <laughs> literally fantastic. just like my characters in. I could I digress about some delicious in dungeon. Um, I want to I want to watch it today, and I'll 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 message you my reactions to it yeah. right there, <laughs> and you, Dylan. I, I'm so ready for that. <laughs> okay, before before we do anything, just so I make sure I've got I'm not missing something. Heart, breath pouch, wing membrane. Quote enough for two cloaks. The wing membrane leather. I, I have it. I just sent, I sent it to you. Oh, you sent everything. Yep. Oh my, uh, uh, okay, uh, oh, yeah, you got the whole oh, table. Oh, I see, oh, I get the whole, th okay, that makes things so much easier, okay, cool, gotcha. Yeah, we got everything yep. on the table. Yep, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 that makes things so much easier. All right, my apologies. <laughs> anyone else doing anything on the deck of the skyport I mean I actually probably would be cool if I have a scene of this but I would want to speak to the like the master of that put this port if possible oh yeah absolutely I believe they would be uh front and center there is a orc with a eye patch over the left eye 
very weathered skin. You can see someone who has been out in the sun for a good portion of their life. Uh, full kind of a uh, military dress. There are medals that adorn uh, the front of his formal attire. It's a very dark navy kind of uh, motif. Two very small uh, protruding tusks and you'll see him in kind of a uh, handful of guard and you could recognize them in particular because they do have a style of long rifle that just wouldn't even be particularly of any use inside the city or anywhere else. It's a solid extra two or three feet onto your own uh, Agent 47 rifle. They're definitely meant for long range protection of the port. And he's flanking with uh, them on either side and kind of uh, approaching in the main drag, definitely looking for the party. I will uh, meet them halfway and close that distance and just put out a hand. Hi, Warden Callista. I knew we would be in the presence of a warden with quick dispatch like that. He extends his hand towards yours with a stiff handshake. Rumbar Fallen Bridge, pleasure to meet you. No, trust me, the pleasure is mine. I'm glad I'm going to be leaving in the rest of the point in good hands and a fellow marksman, I'm guessing, because I gesture to the rifle. <sighs> I wish we would have been of good use to you, but you were so fast that we couldn't even form our own ranks. But indeed. It's it's my job to make sure all of you don't need to do any work like that. And if I didn't, if you didn't need to do any work like that, it was a job well done to me. I like your style, Callisto. I like yours. Um, when we're free, I actually would love to take a look at your long rifle. I don't think I've seen anything like it. And I can definitely tell it's made for much further distance than mine is right now. And... <laughs> take a look I, I think Kalissa is fully kind of like this is a cool gun I kind of want to see this cool gun for a second <laughs> while I can he immediately takes the gun off of the first honor guard that's next to him it would be my pleasure as he hands over this military style long rifle yeah, I just want to do like a quick once over just to see what I can gather from the way it's been built. I think the first thing I always look for, just probably because it's like natural for me, is to see if it's like of dwarven um, make in any way, shape or form. But other than that, just to see how it, um, you just see him basically being a long rifle fan, being like holding it up, testing out the weight of it, the balance of it all, um, really looking into like everything down to the how it's put together as well, without actually pulling it apart, of course. But looking into how it's put together and cleaned out and um, reloaded, all of that kind of stuff. There is a magical property to this rifle. The minute that you have it in your hands, it is balanced in a way that wouldn't have been achievable within craftsmen's own abilities because okay. of its ridiculous length. You try to test its balancing point and it's it's not there. It's perfectly balanced for you to take a long shot. In fact, when you eye up and you look at the scope, there is kind of an essence where this gun seems to breathe with you. When you inhale and exhale you can feel the gun steadying with you and rising and falling perfectly within your hands it's almost as if this has its own lungs there's these side ports that almost look like gills that open up and expand and contract with your own breathing pattern interesting the minimum distance on... is a thousand feet on this air rifle. 
This is a Damn. thousand by twenty five hundred rifle that is meant for extreme distance support. If you use your full action and bonus action, you're able to get an advantage shot, but it completely consumes your turn. Okay. I guess mechanically, that's the only way I can get advantage with this then. I can't like, even if I have abilities innate to my class, I can't get advantage any other way. No, you can always use it, it, innate abilities to work with it. This okay. is its standard like procedure. A point where you can spin that point to make it happen, but. Yeah, okay. Now you're always able to use your innate abilities to try to manipulate. This would be for anyone that would step out of this militia would be able to use that property. Okay. I think, I think it's a combination of Kletter being a marksman but also being the son of a pair of um, dwarves. He loves creations of any kind, but especially when there's a, a perfect marriage of magic and mechanics. Um, and he looks up and just goes, this is incredible. Is this just standard issue for everyone on port? Or is this something that you got for your guardsmen in particular? <laughs> particular specialty of our port we're on our own out here warden if we didn't have protection yeah. like these I fear for the state of this floating city better to keep yeah. ourselves protected from pirates from a long distance away yeah the further we can deal with them Honestly, the better. Um, I can tell you from experience, I guess, now. Um, Unfortunately, they don't do a lot against agents cloaked in storm. Yes. Speaking of, um, it's actually the reason why I wanted to speak to you. We managed to protect you um, with, uh, yes, quite a bit of combat skill, but I won't lied to you we did use a lot of deception as well and i think we've put a bit more of a target on the port's back in resisting that attack so i think it might be best and all i can do really is advise as a warden but it might be best if you can if possible have the port dock with stormforge or land somewhere a bit safer until we can deal with the threats more permanently that'll take some suspicious sus, uh, <laughs> some specific requests you believe that we're in grave danger for more attacks honestly yes Go ahead and roll persuasion with advantage. Okay. I am rather persuasive most of the time. 28. Roll an insight check. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh, you rolls. <laughs> 18. Uh, Admiral Fallenbridge is a proud man, and you can see that on his uh, pause. Your stream demeanor. just went yeah, down. stream went down. Oh, 48 hour stream. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rip, rip the dream. I totally forgot that this morning. <laughs> It'll be right back up. <laughs> yeah, so I just need to stop you. Real Thank quick. you. Thank <laughs> you for stopping me. Stuff. So I didn't lose yeah, like you. 10 minutes. 
Just say nothing's worse than production mishaps. Oops. Hey, the best part is it doesn't affect the uh, the VOD. <laughs> yeah. Really, Pink's doing pretty okay today for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Hangover. Look at that invisible uh, cat on his shoulders over there. Look at this. <laughs> I, uh, Kitty got cantrips. Of, you're doing great work controlling the tail. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I told him that it looks like a cat clock. With the little, yeah. uh, yeah. Oh my god. I was yeah. The same thing. As soon as she showed her butt and was doing that, I was like, oh, <laughs> that's a little cat clock for us. Uh, good timekeeper. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We love it. How lovely. Baby girl. And mine's screaming at the door, but I can't let her in. <laughs> Ow. Baby, that hurts. So what's the name of this this guy who owns the rifle? We're just going to go it? ahead and take our uh, ad break right there that's about to start. So this is a perfect time for you guys to stretch, use the restroom, and then we'll come back into the scene <laughs> oh with God, Admiral Grunbar. Mm. Or, yeah, Admiral Grunbar Fallen Bridge. Wait. Grunbar? Grumbar. I will post Grumbar. it for you. Grumbar. I love his last name. I want to know the story of that ancestral moment that solidified that. Uh, you know Shaman what? Bridge. <laughs> We're finding cool, out at the same time but... because I like to run my NPCs off DM heroes. <laughs> uh, and Perfect. other DMs, so... I cannot recommend this website enough. They are lovely. And at the click of a button, you can get your npc that you want and a little a couple Ooh. of descriptions um it's my favorite improv tool in D. &D. what do you do for? okay and you I don't have to take everything back. but they give you just like they give yeah. you just enough to where you're like okay i want to key in on like one or two things so grumbar what was the last name fallen bridge grumbar fallen bridge it's in chat oh lovely uh, it doesn't keep chat open oh, it would gotcha. crash even more <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Things are being great today. All right, here, please. Oh my god! And a thousand, a minimum rate of a thousand feet. That is slaps. <laughs> this is a. Uh, this is gonna be a wild tool. It really will be. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if Callisto would ask for it or not. Oh, he's given it to you. He he took it off oh, of the. Given it? Oh. You oh, defended damn. the skyport before they could even act. They are very. This dude loves you. Um. Okay, I'm not complaining. <laughs> it's that thing of like you do the noble hero bit of oh, I shouldn't really ask for anything in in return, <laughs> and then they're sitting there being like, shut the hell up and take your reward, and you're like, okay. <laughs> And you know, Kalisto was just like, hey, can I look at it? And I was like, here you go, keep it. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, and he also, you, you, you're, you're a rifleman. You're a pistolero. Like he... Yeah. It's a military game man. He has something... To... <laughs> you gave to it. Game. <laughs> oh. It is going on your sheet inventory now. Speaking of, does the sword that I was given, does that have stats as well, or...? I am drawing a blank. The, the blade of second chances? You mean? Yes. Uh, I mean, it, there's an old version, but I don't think <laughs> that's quite the same. Uh, this, this, this is the one that... Um, uh, this is the one you got from Arvard, correct? From Emboing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you, Ruba. I... <laughs> yep. I'm looking over here in my notes. I do not have this thing made. That's okay. I, I'm probably not going to use it this session, but just something else. I need to take care of okay. that. No, no, no. No worries. No worries. I was just suddenly like, wait, I have a thing. You have a sword from a god. It's kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of a thing. Yeah. Sword of a god, son of a demon. Let's go. Mm. <laughs> and we have so many chargers. I should use charger at some point, the charger card. Hmm. 
kind of that thing of like doing stuff in this party where basically everybody is a ranged character except for our any summons. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I'm really fucking... I, I, I'm stunned that we have a... First of all, I'm stunned there's a table for that that whole load of fucking food, <laughs> but I am stunned that, uh, yeah, uh, everything. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a fuckload of fucking shit. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited to play, um, my, I've played a mum's seeing you bring all of this forge, forge, um, ingredients and equipment. It'd be that, it'd be that typical chastising thing of like, you know, kind of fucking walks in all four arms laden with bones and scales and things, and then they look at you being like, why don't you ever do anything like that? And it's like, <laughs> why don't you ever bring us gifts? <laughs> it's like the, the cruel reality oh. of, I, do you see how many of these guys I shot? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was working today. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, look at them. Aww. Oh, goodness. Say hello to Tony. <laughs> No. Ooh, Ed, um, shift a little bit more towards the center of your camera. Oh, his there eyes. you go. Oh my oh, god. Oh, just oh, staring. Just terrified. Oh. It's just oh. excited to see the world, aren't you? You got a chat mm. from, from Tallulah. <gasps> no. Oh. <laughs> Ed's cat yeah. does love a good shoulder. I mean... Mm -hmm. Honestly, my fir <laughs> my first interaction with her, because I remember saying, like to myself, maybe just because I've watched Inside Lewin Davis one too many times, but I was like, I really want a cat that I can take around with me on trains on a shoulder. And my first time meeting <laughs> Sasha, she was around yay big, and I remember I like picked her up and I was like, hello, and she just went, Arr! and immediately like climbed up onto my shoulder, and I was like, yeah. This is the one. This was mad. My baby. <laughs> All right. Going back into the scene. You can see the pride on Admiral Grumbar Fallen Bridge's face. There's a bit of embarrassment and shame that the port couldn't handle itself. The things happen so quick and there's that small momentary pause before you can see a leader of his stature checks his own individual pride. As a warden, you can see that. He stops. He sees the message in your eyes. At this point, you are above report. I trust you, Callisto. We'll do what we can to vacate our extra weight and begin to head back to Stormforge and reattach to the port proper there. I will relay this news that you have given. I do not know who that man was in the sky. But I am glad that we have individuals like yourself that can handle the gravity of such a situation. I will pass this in along on the report. And please, take this rifle as a gift for defending our home in the skies. I, I, are you, are you sure? I, I definitely appreciate the gesture, but it's not necessary. It's not needed. It's a specialty of ours. Please, 
Let it protect you as you have protected us. Thank you. Thank you. I, I do need to ask, though, did you... Who made these? I wish I could take credit. But alas, there is no forge in this port. There was an inventor in our ranks, an artificer. One that used to frequent the ports quite often. I'll be honest, they weren't in this craft as a typical mercenary or armsman. They were an inventor that made based off situations and solutions. Howard was a bit of an enigma. He frequented many of the skyports around Stormforge. Lost track of him in the last decade. Moved on to larger projects. I don't know his means of creating such a rifle. But as you can see, it's imbued with magics that allow the average user to take advantage of them. As you know, back at Stormforge, these kinds of things don't necessarily get the respect that they should. Unfortunately, we do not have that luxury out here on the edge. I would say no one's coming to help us, but that's the exact opposite of what happened today. I think after today, I might speak to the rest of the wardens and see if we can have at least some stations nearby from now on after we've dealt with the greater threat when the port is ready to be out and about again have the sky be more of a warden's area as well as the ground we would indeed welcome that gesture there is a shall we say overconfidence in our aerial supremacy I think we just found that out more than ever today. Yeah. We are not the only ones in the sky. I fear that some have just frequently discovered us. Getting this port docked with Stormforge's priority, but if you can reach out to the other ports nearby just to let them know, that'd be wonderful as well. I will. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Christo. Just doing my job. He salutes I... as the rest of the honor guard does as well. One of them looking very awkward as he goes through the motions as if he has the skyport rifle but doesn't oh no <laughs> <laughs> glitter just does a very casual like nod and wave as they salute and go on their way and kind of eyeing looking the rifle up and down he'll walk towards the rest of the group just for reference for everyone out there it is a plus three rifle it does 2d12. It is meant to be a cannon in the hands of the wielder, but as it was said before, it is a very specific use for long range targets. The rest of the group did uh, Lolly's waiting for everybody to join her. She's finished 
with those that she was working on. Mishkin, I think, sidles up quite close, just like directing the lightning rods <clears throat> onto the ship and just stands next to Lolly and Are you all right? Yeah, you sure poured that one out of nowhere. <laughs> yes. No one I would have rather had by my side, though. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't think I would have been much help up there if we had to fight him. Hmm. I could slap on some bandages, maybe. He just smiles, and you feel just on your shoulder, just Mishkin's wrist, just resting. So I didn't want to bring it up, you know, in the middle of a the presence of a god, but when I looked at you, and she, you notice her eyes lower. Who are Anya and Anessa? Noticing the thread that was weaved from what Kaivar and you had put together for your scarf. My mother's. They had beautiful names. They had beautiful hearts. I think you would have liked them. Well, if you're anything like them, then I would have. Might have taken some time, <laughs> but I would get there. I actually think you would have had a lot in common. Why is that? And the way you are with this Eva. Oh. It reminds oh. me a lot. I have to tell you something. Ziva's birthday's coming up, and uh, we've been out for a while. Uh, did you have a gift that you wanted to potentially give him in a couple weeks? You have a couple weeks, don't worry, you have time. But we've been gone so much, and Ziva really likes you. So... I did not realize we were on gift-giving terms. Um. To be fair, you already gave him a gift. Yes, but I believe that was somewhat unwanted. <laughs> More so by their father. So... Not Ziva. <laughs> Ziva liked it. Um, can I roll to <laughs> DC? <laughs> no! Mishkin just looks at oh, you. Oh my god. <laughs> I well, see. well, well. Oh no. So she you see her pause and her eyes just start moving back and forth as she's trying to think of some excuse to not tell you that Kalisto threw it in the fire. <laughs> this is Eva <laughs> never saw it. Uh, you know, it was it was really late whenever he received no, it. I, I you, think you that he liked it. No, okay. no, no, he no, loved it. He really fine. did. No, no, he really no, liked Lufia, it. you don't. You really don't uh, need to do this. That's fine. But um, he would have. <laughs> but this next one will be better. I'm sorry. Perhaps simple prestidigitation to help with the dishes. Maybe. It is his favorite. I swear, if that's all he's been doing for his chores... Ooh. At least they're being done. Yeah, but it's not teaching him lessons. <laughs> we use the gifts that we're given, and that we learned. Yeah. For good or ill. And washing dishes. Speaking of gifts, and she's going to look at your, your wrists. How are you adjusting to those? Not the original ones. The new ones. Uncomfortably. Is 
Is it the fact that they're there? He gestures at Kaiba. A friend over there gave me a great gift some nights ago. He gave me a memory. A very clear memory. Really? <laughs> My mother's in the snow. Myself as a child. I've been carrying that with me for some time. I'm experiencing that again, able to revisit that. It made the anger a little easier to bear. How long have you been holding on to that? My anger. Yeah. Fifty years. Sixty, maybe. I'm... Longer than I'd care to remember. And are you still angry? Oh, yes. Is that what keeps you going every day? Especially in this pursuit of your enemies, our enemies. It used to be the sole thing that drove me. And then I met two parents and a young child. It reminded me that self-preservation, while important, there are some things that are worth fighting for beyond oneself. Yeah. I felt similar to you before I met Kalista and Ziva. Well, it is I nice know. to have other people to bring that joy back and the happiness. Well, far be it for me to pry that I won't. <laughs> but... You're sweeter than I was. I just pried as hell. <laughs> to be fair, I showed up on your doorstep. True. Sometimes you gotta let the stray in, you know? Well... From one found stray to another. If you ever do want to talk... I've always been more of a listener. Ah, then maybe you should start using that listening skill, because your talking skills keep getting us into trouble. Have you noticed this record? I seem to remember you complimenting me on uh, my abilities up in the sky just now. Two things can be true at once. Very true. Well, I will go see to those lightning rods. Uh... Where are you going to store those? A below deck. They should be fine. But I think our host back in Stormforge might be able to do something with them. I might have an inkling of an idea. It could be a part of your gift to Ziva. We'll talk about it back in Stormforge. That we will. And Mishkin walks up the ramp onto the airship. Molly's just gonna wait for Kalisto to wrap up. It's Kaiva. 
you probably see me hauling the last of the sort of remnants um, from the cloud dragon uh, onto the onto the ship. It's kind of an uneasy balance and very slow and careful process, so nothing falls off into the abyss. Oh, we're taking the majority of the dragon with us. <laughs> Kaiva just looks over at you. Vox is not in his hands because they're all full. So you get a quick psychic bump of... Uh, yes. You know what? I can probably see how we can use some of this, honestly. Especially... Did you get... the gland? Oh. Uh, yes, yes. And Kaivar is going to sort of... He, he, he finishes taking that bunch of stuff that he's got and uh, he's going to show you the pile that has formed on the ship uh, and in prize of place, nested uh, securely between two of the bone shards, almost like the, the sort of heart of a dragon's horde that has been placed in prime of uh, position, you can see that very messy gland from the throat of the dragon. Oh, you really weren't wasting anything from the dragon. Did you get all of this? Uh, uh, this one, and, uh, Farouk, yes. That actually kind of makes sense. I, I'm not surprised that Farouk is good at salvaging everything you can. Uh, this one, Kaiva, uh, bad with paring knife, carving knife, uh, Skinning knife. Bad with knives. Yes. I will grab um, one of the scales. I think like the one of the thick ones, when you describe it as like a plate, Kevlar plate. Kind of just like flip it around in my hand. Do you have any plans for this? Or just kind of what ifs? Hmm. Uh, Kaifar looks at you and uh, nods feverishly with very intent eyes, but he doesn't say anything. Just sort of looking over his assembled horde of goodies um, with a small degree of pride and a little bit of fascination. Um, and after having looked at things, uh, he sort of turns back with the realization, you asked for the gland. Uh, picks up the Vox again from nearby. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, if you want, uh, take, yes, use. Oh, um, sorry, I can have my, one of my mums take a look at it and see what it can make with it. Um, I'm not great with using l parts or creatures in my crafting, but my, but Ifjun is probably the best with that. Um, but if that's the gland that is the, responsible for the very painful thunder waves that those things shot, um, this could be really useful in the future. Maybe a thing we can add to the ship even. Uh, could make mighty weapon. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, I think that'd be an understatement. Having all of us been on the receiving end of it, I think that's definitely an understatement. Oh, uh, no, no, not this one, Kava. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, you were smart. Yeah, no. No, um, no. Uh, Kava's just going to kind of lean his head forward, and you see there is a, it's not quite a dent, but you can see a discolored bit of that. scale that has started to sort of flake off a little bit. Uh, this one, Kava, hit my coconut. Yes. Sorry. Are you... Do you... I think Luffy can probably take a... I can take a look at that if you if you want. You, you, you sort of see... It's a very weird sensation as you see the shorter antennas like part in the middle to give you a better a better vantage. Like, it, it's, it's even weirder because Kaiva's already kind of bent uh, form where his body naturally fits into an S shape. Uh, yeah, that, that compacts even more as he sort of lowers himself a bit down so that his face is around about chest height for you. Hey, I, I'll be entirely honest with you. 
I'm looking at it, but I'm realizing that I've never had to help anyone with your physiology in particular. Um, I can maybe bandage it up, but Lilithia might have more magical means if you think that would be more helpful. Does it hurt? Uh, Kaiva is gonna, uh, Kaiva is gonna go ahead and take a, take a sort of claw and give it a, a, a bit of a prod and a poke and a scratch. I, I don't know how this is gonna work out, so I guess con save. Uh. No. Is could. Yes, yes. But, uh, hmm. It's just going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a wave uh, on things. Uh, and I will save people the trouble of everything. Uh, and I will just cast a healing word. Yeah, I forgot. You can. Thing. Magic. I always, yeah. Our one non-magical being in the <laughs> wild. <laughs> this one, Kaiva, is thankful, though. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, no worries. I'm always going to worry about the people on my team. Um, thank you, though. You are a huge help out there. You see Kaiva pause very sort of pensively as he goes back up to his full height. It's not quite something you've seen on the regular, but you see one of those moments where he sort of elongates to stand not exactly straight, given the way that his form naturally curves, but it's much sort of straighter and in a very clearly pensive um, form. You've, you've read enough of Kaivar's body language at this point to know that he sort of rears back a little bit as he's sort of deep in thought. Is everything okay? Uh, is strange, yes, yes. This one, Kaiva. Uh. Hmm. Not knowing quite how to put it into words and fearing the Vox will fail him, Kaiva shakes his head momentarily as he thinks about offering a link, um, and then pulls his hand back, remembering that you are not a fan of that. Uh. You. Uh. Lalufia. Uh. Mishkin. Uh. Farouk, uh, Kelthud, is strange for people to, uh, uh, care, yes, care. But, For this one, Kaiva, it is good, yes. This one, Kaiva, does not regret. He's glad, yes. Is it strange for people to care? Oh, yes, yes. Where you're from, right? Oh, yes. We, us, no single one of us care, yes? We think only as one, yes, for one. Visible sort of realization of the confusion of trying to describe a eusocial society sort of dawns on Kaiva's face, uh, and he very quickly sort of gestures to the pile of remains. Uh, 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 Kaiva is like this, yes? And he picks up one of the teeth, just holds it gingerly. But, uh, there are many like this one, yes? But only one, uh, only one and Kaivar points to the remnants of the dragon's heart that's been salvaged. I... I'm not as learned as maybe Mishkin 
or even a leaf here, but from what I'm understanding, you all lived for the heart. Uh, yes. But... Uh, not like you and uh, Lufia. No, no. Like... Like Yan Sibin. Like... Mishkin when angry, like fire, like uh, no, uh, it is good that you care for this one. Yes, uh, thank you. Yes, yes. Oh. Of course, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, you've more than earned it, so I want to say thank you. Oh, uh, Galisto? Yes? This one, Kaiva. And he's going to gesture towards your newly acquired weapon. And he's going to go ahead and ask to very briefly inspect it and take a look. I think Calisto lights up like if you saw a kid ask them about their new toy. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. No, so the um, Fallen Breed just gave it to me. It's got incredible range. It's about a thousand feet at minimum, maybe 2,500, maybe a bit more at max. Um, and that's just if you're able to take into account the drop. I think you probably go a bit further if you really understand the air pressure and the, and they will hand it over to you, just still talking, just rambling about everything that they noticed from first glance. Kaivar is going to open up the book and I'm going to do a little prayer here. Is 24 on a bardic law thing enough for me to ro turn to a page about someone who has made very good use of firearms in the past so that I can have some relation to this experience, Robert? Absolutely! Yeah, okay. Pulls, pulls through to a, a variety of pages and uh, we'll say that it drops to a page of a, a sort of well, uh, well manicured um and well pedigreed gunslinger who has a long rifle of sorts in a similar fashion has not quite the same make different rifling on this particular uh, weapon definitely not made for the same kind of range but it's a point of relation and Kaivar points ah uh, yes hey yes yes this here yes and uh, as you start relating information, uh, Kaivar is pointing out that particular page in the book, starting to show an understanding of everything, um, and gives that idea of the superiority of the weapon that you've just been handed, showing that it kind of surpasses things that have been made on the page prior. Uh, this one uh, shall wait for you to... Uh, Slay, great foe, show what a great warrior is, yes? Um, I mean, in all honesty, fingers crossed we won't ever need to actually do any slaying, but... God, I think if we do, it's going to be the best bit of equipment we have to do it. Um, how does your... How does your book do that well uh, it remembers how this one Kaiva sees this one Kaiva fights learns weaves yes but this one remembers. And Kaiva is going to start flipping forward through the pages to things that are more contemporary and recent. 
you see the pages that scroll through until you recognize certain key enemies that you fought. You start to see the half-metal, half-biological heart of the Juggernaut that uh, we fought very early on. You then see the remnants of the Sasquatches from somewhat previously, and then this latest page, this Cloud Dragon. Uh, this one, Kaiva, and this, uh, linked together, uh, two, yes, but also one, yes, yes. Yeah. Um. Why do you have this remember? Oh, uh, oh. I'm gonna see if I can do something here. It's left shift for advantage. Yeah. Correct. Oh. Very close. Still good enough with the dirty. Kaivar is going to hesitate for a moment, hesitate again, and then extend a hand, offering a mind blink. His shortened antenna in particular, when you ask why, momentarily you can read a bit of body language from Kaivar. It's almost like a wince, like an automatic reaction, like when someone recoils at just the very mention of something that makes their skin crawl, and then almost instinctively that reflex rebounds and instead of being sort of hushed and smaller the rebounding motion portrays confidence and certainty and security knowing that it's you that's asked this question uh, this one kaiva can show yes yes it's simpler yes yes like always is a moment almost mirroring your almost flinch as you reach your hand out to have a mind link an offer of a mind link to Callisto. he almost he flinches as well stiffens but takes in that same moment a breath almost like the steadying breath he takes before firing pulling the trigger on a shot to steady himself and to reach his hand out You find yourself in a fleeting moment transported to that very familiar plane. And you know what to expect seeing this. The same hexagonal structures, that feeling of rigidity and focus and purpose. And yet, it's not as though things are fractured, it's as though something has unlocked. It's something that feels more fluid to this experience where before it was like standing in a narrow tunnel where wind was being forced down it, now it feels like you're in a canyon where the natural curves of the actual rock faces will help to funnel the wind in a more natural manner. Something is fundamentally a bit different. And as you find yourself on that plane, it is a little bit like being where you are momentarily. Kaiva has made a very intentional choice not to change too much about proportions here. And then things begin to gradually unfold, and that empty void begins to fill. And you see caverns. Just absolutely massive caverns. It's almost like being a termite inside of a termite nest, seeing stalagmites and stalactites rise and fall from the various crevices within the ceiling, seeing strange staircases built into the side of these structures that twist and turn all the way around their circumference, going up and down, pathways leading to doors and crevices and caverns all of their own. It is a hive city. It is the place of Kaivar's people. And this is not just any cavern, where habitation would be found, or weapons might be forged, or warriors might be trained, this is a place of appointed royal purpose. And you see them there, a sea of adoration. 
like a literal wave rolling out towards a central point. You see Kaivar's people, all of them, taking a knee and then taking another and then bowing their heads appropriately, almost to the point of being flat. All of them pointing towards one individual, not at all comparable in size to Kaivar, but absolutely massive, swollen, bloated. And yet also, from knowing Kaivar, you read the same kind of concern in those eyes. Even though they are armored and covered in chitin, even though the hands that you know Kaivar to have are replaced with massive scything claws, you can see that there is, at the heart of this, some concern. And in this moment of stillness, Kaivar points. This one, Kaivar, told you of the heart, yes? Yes. It is they. Yes. Mm. They are the heart. Yes. Callisto watches this scene. The eyes drift to the heart. And then they look for Kaiva in the sea of adoring, admiring um, creatures. Can they see Kaiva in this reconstruction, in this memory? You do see Kaiva briefly, somewhere close to the front, but not quite in a place of honor. It's almost like if this was a church and this was a coronation, which it absolutely is not, that he would be somewhere in the choir, somewhere sitting off to the side, not even in the line of sight of primacy. But there are others that look similar to him. However, you can start to also see that the antenna on Kaival's head are the longer types that you'd seen him pull off before. This is a scene from the past. And as Kaivar notices you noticing that, he sort of moves to communicate, seeing this sort of, not quite still image, but slow motion version of himself. Kaivar looks back at you and nods. Uh, this one was once uh, part of them. Yes, yes. But... It is strange that you care, that uh, Belufia cared, that Meshkin cared. And so, uh, this one found uh, something new, yes? I think still looking at this version of Kaiba, this past version of Kaiba, Callisto Honestly, almost squats down as if trying to look at this Kaiba's face in the prostrating position. Uh, I do you see? I don't really know you well, but I've grown to know. I know more of you than I did before. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of tilts his head, still again looking at this past Kaiba. You look happier now than then. Kaiba sort of somberly joins you and walks over, gently placing his feet between any limbs that might be stepping and sticking out in this particular vision. He's trying to preserve the image for the important moment that it clearly represents, even as something that he has deliberately chosen to walk away from. Uh, 
This one. This, Kaiva. Before you. Did not know happy. Did not know choice. Did not know care. Yes. This, Kaiva. The. start to feel that plane gently falling away. Calista will stand up straight again. <laughs> my... My parents... They, believe it or not, I had quite a bit of uh, self-esteem issues growing up. And it was very hard to tell. A lot of it came from feeling like a burden on my parents. But they always told me, always asked me, do I feel cared for? And obviously my answer would always be yes. And they'd ask, do I care for others? And of course I'd always say yes, I care for them deeply and I've made many friends since since finding them. And then they would say, then you repaid us. If you were a burden, you're not anymore. You've taken what we've given you and you're giving to others. And that's all we could really ask for. So, that care, don't let it die with justice group or within you. I became a warden to keep that promise for my parents. And you don't need to do that, you don't need to be a warden to do that yourself, but just make sure it doesn't end here or even with us. Uh, yes. Yes. Callisto, your family is wise. Yes. There yeah. is much they could teach. Yes, yes. Kaiva's gonna rifle through the book, turning back a few pages and we'll land on a page in the middle of the book that has been left empty, but is part of a double spread. It does not take long at all to recognize that the other page on the left-hand side is clearly Lelufia's motifs of cloud and rain and thunder, sylvan energy. Kaivara is going to offer you the book. There's a moment of hesitation. Probably even more than whenever you've asked to mind link with him. But I think looking over Lelufia's page, he will briefly look over his shoulder at Lelufia probably seeing her speaking with Mishkin 
and then turn back to you, Kaiba. Don't know if I have much of a story to tell, but... Okay. And he'll place his hand on the page. When you do place your palm, there is the gentle ripple of reaction. Callisto, what does your page start to form? What does it look like? I will answer that question with a question. Has your book ever refused to show an image? No, but it's also very much based on impression. The book is not furtively seeking through someone's story, trying to find hidden pieces of information. The book is more of a reflection of you, but also it is a reflection of promise and memory. This does not need to be an uncomfortable experience unless it's something that is intrinsic and something that needs to be remembered for the character. This is very much in your court, Drac, and very much in Callisto's way. Oh, trust me, this isn't Callisto. Um, so I suppose I would describe that something that maybe is the first time Kaiba has witnessed something like this, then. As this ripple of reaction spreads across the page, you see... You see a silhouette of... We can only assume is... Callisto. And around the silhouette, you see colors starting to surface, but they almost immediately be blotted out, almost whited out, before they can make anything even remotely coherent. And it happens over and over and over. And I think, but if you're okay with this, I think your book might even, tra even tremble, begin to tremble at this point, because it feels like it's not that Callisto's not trying to give it something. It's almost as if Callisto and this book can't reach something to give in the first place. And these blots of color keeps getting whited out over and over again as this silhouette of a young Callisto is walking across the page. Each section seems to show an older Callisto, they're growing in height, but again, the color the images, any interpretate anything to be interpreted is immediately blotted out before you can even really register it. About halfway through the page, you see that this silhouette that's been walking, almost a side profile of this silhouette, seems to shift in perspective, and you realize that it's not one person. There are two silhouettes standing side by side in this moment and they seem to shift in perspective again, so you can only see one. And almost directly in the middle of the page, almost perfectly bisecting the page, you see one silhouette walk forward, and another one be pulled or dragged back into the whiteout, disappearing. You see this now most definitely alone silhouette walking and now images are actually being to become realized you can see gold and brass and bronze that you can only see and represent stormforge begin to appear on the page around this moving silhouette and they almost immediately about maybe three quarters of into the page collapse at a symbol that you a bit abstract, but you can tell represents the Amber Heart Forge, the Amber Forge. From there, everything seems to speed up quite a bit, almost like everything is trying, they're trying to concentrate every single thing that happened in his life into the remaining page left over. But in one of the glimpses, you see an, a larger silhouette, it's now looking more like the size build of the clit you see now holding a child in their arms with 
someone by their side, a woman by their side, a woman that's very decisively not Lufia. They have Kitsune ears, the tail, seven of them to be exact. And then all of a sudden, that image is blotted out with the same whiteout as you saw at the beginning of this manifestation. And again, the rest of his life since it was fast forward and was remaining of this page until you see until you see the page, the remaining sliver of the page turn almost magma red as you see a silhouette of Callisto and Lelufia meeting and this affliction that now he has somewhat combated taking root. And you see Callisto now with his hand on this page staring at the whited section of this paper, this Titan. Um, and you see, I think you realize now that it's gone, that there was hope in his eyes when he had placed his hands on this page. But seeing the whiteout, seeing nothing manifest in those times, from those times, he just sighs and pulls his hands away. Before you do that, is there any part of your page, even around the edges, where it's just showing the embossing of motifs that have defined your life, the sort of Art Deco style of Stormforge, the dwarven um, runes that might represent the Amber Forge and your parents? Does any part of that reach over, and does it touch the Lufius page? I would say yes, but as the embossing around the edging reaches the whited art section, you see that it begins to fade and fade until there's nothing left. So I think you see everything from arriving at Stoneforge and onwards, the embossing from that section does touch Lulufia's page. I need a roll jointly from Callisto and Kaivar right after this break. Hold on. And the ad hit right there. Ah! Oh, man. Quick stretch break, and I'm going to have you guys both roll a d20 at the same time. Oh my may, God, uh, <laughs> may I... Uh... May I get just a little uh, momentary thing to throw some RP to, uh, to people just just as we do this, Robert? There is a direction I want to see about going with this. Mm hmm But I will absolutely make that roll because mm -hmm. 100%. Quiet, every time you say <laughs> something like real quickly or just a moment, it turns into a whole it battle. Like minutes, yeah. Yeah. Every <laughs> single time you do it. And so real I get quick, like fear. I'm dead. <laughs> Eric and I threw out Meteorian Core. You have that phrase, and we're just like, oh, real quickly. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, <laughs> real quickly. Just, real quickly. I just want to show you yeah. the, the yep. image of. of Once uh, that keyword happens, body. we're like, oh, here it goes. <laughs> what oh. are we getting into? <laughs> Welcome to Oblivion. <laughs> it's like you foretell the future when you say that word. I'm like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Literally, L gets on to me about that because if ever I say I'll be five minutes, it's never five minutes. It's, it's <laughs> thirty minutes. It's not As it a is. woman, I get it. <laughs> That's I'll where be, you got coded. I'll be honest. Yeah. I I knew what pieces of music to play for Bife. I just got to sit there and stare. I'm like, I don't know what Drac is gonna say for Callisto. <laughs> I'm just so, gonna. I'm so just gonna. Good. <laughs> Beautiful. I was frantically making notes, just like Same. all of this is beautiful. And the music was great too. Good choice. Yes. Oh my god. Oh. Real like Ghibli vibes. It's lovely. Mm. Oh my gosh, you hear that, Drac? Lisa's is a Ghibli character. Cute. Yeah. Honestly, Jimmy Carter is like, actually really okay. devastating. Yeah. Yeah, but say so you fit more in Princess Mononoke, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> this is <laughs> some Totoro moment. <laughs> even House and even Castle is pretty devastating. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's really for... funny because I remember a lot of people have been like, like the kind of like 
the dis not distilling because i think distilling is like not the right word for it but like the simplifying of ghibli into an aesthetic mm -hmm. of being like oh just a cute aesthetic but it's like ghibli is honestly it's deeply troubling oh, a lot of the time yeah. <laughs> like it's very upsetting it's because it, it, like covering very upsetting and real themes the moment you sit there and realize that like a solid high percentage of Ghibli stories are set in a post-apocalyptic series of worlds, you will realize, oh, yeah, no, this entire thing is sending a very distressing message about what the hell is happening right now. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we should really be listening to this, guys, guys, please, no, please, no, no, guys, come <laughs> back. I swear to God, if you've... <sighs> I know it's like Spirited Away, but please, it's not the only one that exists. There are so many Spirited more good Away ones. is terrifying. It is I had nightmares terrifying. about my parents turning into pigs. <laughs> that is, like, <sighs> people turning into animals are really just like been a key traumatizing thing from like people's childhoods because we had Pinocchio, everyone mm -hmm. turning into donkeys, mm -hmm. which is yeah. horrifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Spirited Away of mm -hmm. parents turning into pigs, which is horrifying. Even No Face yep. is a terrifying creature, pretty Ugh. near near the end. Yeah. Ugh. Pigs oh, and trauma just image. go hand in hand. The first time you end up reading Charlotte's Web, Animal oh, Farm, yeah. just nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Children pig drama. Closest, uh, <laughs> closest animal in some ways to human beings, and boy oh boy, does literature lean on that shit. <laughs> oh. We are back. The scene is yours. You guys can wait on that roll whenever you finish up. As there is even the briefest of touch from one page to another. Lelufia, how does your page react? Hmm. I feel like some of the clouds and the mist from those ashes that she had had on some parts of her page and like the decolletage edges of these misty bits would almost creep into it like a covering, make it as opaque as possible. And it's, it's grasping at that memory that they have formed together. And it, has a radiating light that slowly begins to beam through as a warmth forms amongst just this spot of page where it's touching. Yeah. You ready to uh, roll this, Drac? Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Okay, cool. Why are you going to say it like Let's that? <laughs> Just say when, I guess we're running exactly the same time, right? Say when. Yep, absolutely. Call it, my guy. Can it down okay. from three? Yeah. Three, two, one. Oh my god. We both oh rolled gosh, four. Besties. <laughs> oh my god. Four is the best what number in this that, game. That, That's that, like a 20. Oh my god, it is a four. Holy shit. <laughs> Oh god, I hope this was like get the identical number as opposed to roll high. I, I don't <laughs> yeah, know if we really was roll high. Like, oh my god. Um, oh. <laughs> Robes face. Yeah, no, like, no, is, no it's one hundred percent a sync roll. Oh. Did we just get a one in four hundred track? Oh my god! <laughs> I think we did. <laughs> I need everyone to take their headset off except for Drac. Oh, hell yeah. Here we go. Have oh. fun. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Drac. I want you... If you are comfortable because of this scenario mm. and the bonding on the book I want you to reveal a certain amount of your unknown past oh 
Okay. I don't want. I want you to be comfortable with what you pick, but I want you to reward something to manifest on that page for you to share that moment with Kaivar. Okay. If you need a little bit of time to decide, we can hop over a scene for a minute. It's your choice. Oh, I, I have I have an idea. I okay. Think. As yeah. as as long as you're comfortable with doing it and rolling the roll, then let's do it. But I want to double check with you. Yeah. Okay. So how'd it go? Yeah, so you all get to hear this. Um, I think as Callisto is pulling their hand away, just from the positioning of their hand, and I think just they they focus on the whited out section of the book, the page, as they you see disappointments wash over wash over their face, over their expression. Um first at the page and then almost at themselves for expecting anything else and as they pull their hand away from the page they realize that underneath it a small sliver of color seems to bleed into the whited out section of the page not very far not even really halfway or even a third of the way through just a small sliver and you see again very similar to the magma red or the final section of the page with Lelufia and Callisto together there's a magma red again as almost the background of the silhouette that becomes two two silhouettes standing side by side and you see Almost, almost as if it was lit up by this magma. You see the white hair of Callisto, just air barely visible on the silhouette. And you see the almost deep ocean blue hair of the other silhouette. Again, right beside them. And just from the bits and pieces you can get from the lights, almost like this, these people are being backlit. You can see that they have very similar outlines. It's probably your best guess, guess that these are twins. But that's as far as it goes into the whited out section. After that, if the color fades again and it's black. What is Callisto's initial reaction to seeing this? Um. I think Callisto stares at this bit of the page, a sliver of the page. Um, and on his face, you I want to say you can't read anything, but I think everything drops from Callisto. And I think in this moment, Kaiba, you might realize that while Kalissa tends to be genuine, he definitely does boost it when around people. You see all of that just entirely disappear to the point where there doesn't seem to be any emotion on his face as he stares at this sliver of the page. 
and then almost like tossing a bucket of paint on a blank canvas this empty expression is very quickly overcome with I don't even know if he knows what he's overcome with almost like an intense feeling of realization that it brings him to tears just an intensity of a feeling that in this moment you couldn't ask him if it was positive or negative because he wouldn't know but it's so intense that it brings him to tears and almost like a well trained muscle he clamps down on that and controls the expression on his face the emotions he's showing well then um more than I expected uh, I hope that was a good addition to your book like I said, not much of a story to tell. You say there's not much to tell. Yes, yes. The, mm, uh, I disagree. You can sort of see Strangely enough, the book seems to almost ripple once again in response. You know that it's formed on its tome edges from that sort of chitinous, almost wing membrane. Um, and it doesn't quite flutter in response, but it does give enough to sort of subtly shift. Sort of almost as though in agreement, in assent there is a degree to which you don't know how much has or hasn't been recorded. It's very clear that there is a lot that is still hidden. But who knows? Maybe there is more. It's a very odd sensation because you've only ever seen the book from afar, but you will then see how it closes itself with a sort of sudden thud normally, but in this instance, it almost creates enough momo uh, momentum to just sort of gently flip it over and closing like so. Pages coming to a nice, well folded close on itself. Kaiva will pick the book back up. I don't think I'll get used to everything. Uh, no, no, but thank you for caring. Yes, yes. And Kaiva is just gonna curtly nod and turn away almost looking like a fish out of water with the way that he walks, with the way that he's clutching the book closely to, well, where his chest would be were it not for the strange cavity of an S-shape in the natural curvature of his body. The way that he holds the Vox, you can even see, is sloppy by comparison. Go ahead and roll an insight check, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah. He's a weird old bug, isn't he? I'm. I don't think I'm even uh, looking bugger. at Kaiva. The moment you turn away, mm, Callisto and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You do both notice that it has stopped raining since you first engaged. There is an era of calm and that intense fresh rain and ozone smell 
a bit of renewal presence in the air. Callisto. I think Callisto will take a walk. Just a quick lap around the port, I think, after that. No better place to take it. You have long walkways to collect your thoughts. He doesn't dawdle. He doesn't take too long. He just does a quick walk to gather himself again. Um... I'm gonna, yeah, hold on. Let's be like a, sure. Oh, <laughs> oh what is, wow, what, what this is mean? this? Okay. Michigan, I did throw it in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> no more secrets. Um, this is perfect. Damn. Okay, we have yeah. never seen the more you than now, and I am so yeah. here for this. It's about time. I think, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that shook him. That shook him a lot. Um, I truly, I think this not one. I think Klish has been very clearly crying when he boards the ship again. I think it's just like puffy eyes, red, um, trying his best to hold himself as usual. Um, I think even he is fully aware that it's not working, but he knows he can't put off returning to the ship any longer, especially with what we have to deal with on Stormforge. Um, so you, you'll see after a moment, you'll probably see Kalissa walk down the lane, just taking a moment to himself. Probably you very noticeably see him wiping his eyes. Um, and then when he's returning, it's very clear that he has been crying. Um, Uh, we're we ready. We ready to go. <laughs> I think with everybody boarding, and she's been patiently just waiting for you, not approaching, not utilizing their necklaces, but watching. Even as you come up and approach. I think she would almost cut you off from just continuing on to the ship and embrace you. She wouldn't say anything, but she would just hug you. Um, is, is everything okay? Pulling away. It's not me that's crying, right? But you don't have to talk about it right now. He just and her hand reaches for yours. He takes your hand, and they are trembling. She squeezes that one hand, not quite in an effort to stop the trembling, but just. Just the feeling of, I'm here, when you're ready. And she would almost take that as her initiative to continue and lead you onto the ship again. Yeah. He... I don't think he talks much after that, just follows your lead. And she wouldn't pray. 
It's a comfortable silence to her. Um, she's used to these moments, and they're both really respectful in that silence. So. Meshkin just watches from afar. And... <clears throat> Kill that. Are we ready to hoist anchor? Well, I'm not entirely sure what you say. <laughs> ah, not only that, I've had enough time to prep a meal. Oh, good. I was thinking uh, something spicy this evening, and well. I'm rather proud of it. <laughs> like still, you'd be surprised just how many spices they have over inside the commissary in this Skype work. Probably overspent a little bit, but I don't get out enough in a situation to buy well comforts enough. Life is for the living, Kelthad. Indeed. Szechuan Cloud Dragon? Why don't you, uh, ask our friend over there? And he nods to Farouk. I'm sure he'll oblige you. Oh! <laughs> He's been down here below helping me, giving me a hand. Of we actually course. have the uh, rest of the meat ready and cured. Once we get back, we're going to load it into the smoker. Me and Farouk have big plans for all of this. <laughs> of that, I have no doubt. The generosity of your heart and your stomach matches almost his. Some say we have a lot in common. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I need like a Tales of Barsing say mini episode where Farouk and Kelthard open up a smokehouse and it's just booming business. Right next to the Bear role playing himself. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple Robert personalities all in the same food truck in my imaginary world. <laughs> I just want to hear you get confused on which accent is which. <laughs> it happens. Who talking us right now. <laughs> yeah. It all blends together. <laughs> Kelthad's going to look up over the deck and see this juxtaposition. Kaivar walking with a bit of a weird gait, kind of corn cobbing around. Mishkin, probably being the most of himself, a bit inquisitive and a bit brooding. And he's going to look over at his favorite couple in the entire world. And he sees you both for the humans that you are, not wardens, not heroes of the day. A husband and wife that just really want to go home. It brings a little bit of a tear to his eye. Let's get this thing fired up, shall we? I think it's time to go home. Hands you a bowl of Szechuan Cloud Dragon. Some freshly fluffed rice and vegetables in an immaculate sauce. Not too hot, but plenty of flavor. And you guys hear the hum good. of that airship fire up once again. Lights coming on. And a nice kind of 
ASMR of ship sounds washes over the entire deck. Anything anyone's doing before we begin to float away from this skyport. Well, I would happily be enjoying your food and bringing Callisto a plate as well. Not waiting for him to outreach to accept, but setting it next to him as she sits in front of him, probably each on a like a crate across from one another. And similarly to before they had adventured off, she would be taking her bites and like waiting for him to also eat. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yeah, he eats. <laughs> I think this is one of the best ones I've ever had. You've really outdone yourself this time, Kelsad. As you can see, the two are talking counterpoints over that handful of packets of seeds and spices that Kelthud has procured. Mishkin goes and sits over to Kaiva and, as always, has a cup of water, a little bit of bread, and this one saw what you did for our friend over there. Yes, yes. Uh, he says he has no story, but this is not true. It is just not ready to be retold. Yes, yes. When the time is right, It will be remembered. Yes, yes. Well, even the best stories need a good writer to draw it out. Kaiva's going to pensively look at the book. He's going to sort of put one palm on it, not in any kind of sense of inferring knowledge, but just almost to steady himself. There is a degree of uncertainty that you can recognize, I'd say, Mishkin, because you've been around for a while. And it's clearly something that is worrying Kaivar. If this you one. want, you can also roll that insight check. Um, yeah, go on then. <laughs> we'll keep that in mind as you continue to ask questions. Something troubling, Kaiva. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, sometimes. Life is like, uh, roads, uh, yes. You are led places, go places. Uh, direction is easy, but now. I feel like this ship, yes. No roads. Any direction can be taken. Yes, yes. Forgive this one if this one speaks out of turn, but this one gets the sense that Kaiva, until coming to Stormforge, moved by predetermined paths. Is this one correct? Yes, yes. It 
Doctor's Kaiva. I find this uncertainty unpleasant. Yes, uh. No. Uh. I. I. May choose where to go. Yes, yes. But. What if the choice is wrong? Yes. No. That is what freedom is, Kaiva. It is mistakes. It is learning. Much as you learn through that book. And through the conversations that we have with one another. Not all mistakes are bad. You can start to see a little bit of what's happening start to unravel. As you can see, Kaivar's very posture change. There is a rigidity to him that no longer exists. There is something else that has taken its place. It is, as you have described, it is both the joy of possibility and the burden of responsibility, both of which are brought by freedom. It's the knowledge that choices are his now. And quietly, without really asking, almost forgetting, he reaches out and touches your arm and forms a momentary link. Not in the same manner of creating a plane, but just for the sake of physical touch and knowing that someone is there. And he will reach out psychically to say, For the first time, I am uncertain, as you say. Yes. Maybe there is joy. Maybe there is sorrow, but this future is mine. Yes. Yes. It is. It is a gift you have all given to the, to me. Yes. How yes. how do you keep it all in your your head? How do you know where to go? How do you make these decisions? These are all things I will learn for the first time, yes, but I wish to walk with your surety and Lalufia's rage and Callisto's care. I wish to be me. Kaiva, if you look at me and you see surety, I promise you, that is not the case. That freedom, that uncertainty you speak of, never really leaves you. It's the awful secret they don't tell you. That rage you see in Lalufia, there's not just rage. There's tremendous love. Love that rages like the winds, admittedly, but also soft like the breeze. And as for Callisto, there is calm. There's passion, 
bravery and hurt. We all of us contain multitudes, Kaiva, yourself included. And it is impossible to hold all of these things in one being, and yet, here we are. I thought myself defined by one thing for a very long time also. I was wrong. Life is full of many colors. Don't drown them out. It will be good to choose, I think, to have purpose. Yes, purpose, but one I choose. And this is like freedom, yes? It is. The freedom to know and the freedom not to know as well. You see a degree of certainty added back to Kaivar. Not certainty that you would see from someone who absolutely understands where they are, but at the very least, the steadying of a ship. And then there is this almost eureka-like spark and a widening of Kaivar's eyes, and he starts rifling through the book. It's not something where he's looking for anything specific. He is taking all of it in and trying to understand exactly what his purpose is. It's almost like he is, paradoxically enough, for someone whose class is technically a bard, searching for inspiration. Seeing this, Nishkin just nods to himself and not wishing to disturb, not wishing to distract. He stands up on quiet, cat-like paws and just sits in the corner and continues eating. Just before you leave, feeling that presence going, Kaiva quickly and suddenly looks back up. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mishkin. Yes, yes. Th thank you. And this one thanks with. you. Watching you go through this book. Fane is going to curiously float over to your side, Kaivar. A seeker of knowledge. I see. Uh, 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 yes, yes. How long has one scribed such a collection? Uh, too long, especially for this. And Kaiva isn't using this one to refer to himself. He is actually motioning directly to the book. It's a collection larger than even one's self-experience. 
Mm, yes, yes. Many lifetimes. One memory. Many jeepers. Yes, yes. I too am a collector of such knowledge. I see the spark inside you that I saw inside myself so long ago. What do you wish for? Uh. Great, Seer Thane. This is the problem. Yes, yes. I do not know yet. But these ones. And Kaivar is going to rifle through the pages and lands on the first few pages that were filled in the book. Namely, the pages of Chrissy and Farouk. And then he begins to leaf through, showing the other three pages. Mishkin, Lelufia, Callisto. Ah, uh, yes. This explains much. The presence of the Star Child still lingers on all of you. He protected us. Yes, yes. Like a great uh, shield. Like a shield. Yes, yes. Pain is just gonna kind of flick his fingers up against what feels like an almost ethereal like barrier that's around the airship, and it just kind of and kind of dissipates like stardust. Kaiva. Your interest mirrors that of my own. But I am afraid that one book is not where your journey ends. Do not be afraid. Kaivar is going to intently stare at the book and consider what Fane is saying, listening to every single syllable. He's going to extend his hand, and it's like cards that fan out almost in an ethereal motion. And then they start small, but they expand out as he fans five or six books in front of you. They are all Arctic lore, the same as your own.
He gestures for you to put your hand on the one that he is touching. Kaiba will definitely examine the tome momentarily before doing it, but he will acquiesce. As you put your hand on that book, golden embossed text begins to form on this purple leather bound book. There is in all many worlds outside of our own. And it begins to spell out Faerun. And the book opens up to the first page and begins to manifest a city that you've never seen. called Baldur's Gate. There are places like our own that exist everywhere. Similar, yet different. Creatures unimaginable. Conditions of community and greater societies beyond belief. Do not be afraid of the sheer amount. And as you look up from the book, you're no longer just sitting on this airship. It is like a hologram. It is like being in the ethereal plane. You're in a library of endless books. Strange places. As he opens up a secondary book that's next to your hand, as you see Oddly dressed individuals walking through a corridor of a very architecturally different building. See, the style and the dress of these individuals looks like nothing that you've ever seen. Pass by a sign that says Eden Falls. <laughs> Truly strange places. somewhere in here yes 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 no one does not solely need to search for purpose sometimes we just need to learn to feel 
as he opens up another book. Strange set of small children set far into a dark wood. The expressions are that of which you've seen before. But it's almost fae-like intrinsic how they animate and interact with each other. So similar yet so different. There are things for beyond just this brook, Kaiva. You have been blessed by our order. It is your right to experience these worlds. Your abilities far outpace even my own. Our library is all best kept secret. Many have searched endlessly to find our secrets, the true wealth of our order. But it is not a physical place. It is all collective consciousness. This is our greatest secret. Kaiva, I only ask of you. To not be so guarded as the Vosborg of the past. Share these worlds. For stepping in other shoes is the greatest experience. One person can have. Kaivar, you can access the library of the Voshborg at any point in time that you wish. You also have the ability to bring anyone with you, even if they are not marked with the blessing of the Voshborg. Consider it like stepping through a dimension door. That's huge. Well, they say the key to infinite wealth is sometimes infinite knowledge, and good God, what a wealth of knowledge. Kaivar will look around these shelves and briefly look through the tomes that Thane has highlighted, and then he'll reach out and pull a few more from the shelves opening to pages, and he opens his own book alongside them. For it must have been over 3,000 generations. We have gathered. 
that knowledge for others, for one to selfishly hoard. It will be good to share this gift, I think. Yes? And maybe I will find what I am looking for as well. And you see those books begin to open to pages. And there are dozens of figures that appear before. Kaivar's own book turns back to the page of Chrissy in his giant astral self, defending the very ship that everyone is currently residing on. Another book opens, and a giant bear-like figure with a massive weapon in hand can be seen facing down creatures of the deep. Another again, purple, the Book of Faerun, as a devilish-like tiefling with fire in his eyes casts a shield over another. The book flips to a new page. There is a woman with eyes as black as night and hair to match. Shield up, a woman of faith in a temple with stone of black and silver. Guarding people, she's only known as friends. There are dozens of warriors, dozens of heroes that are conjured through these pictures. Kaivar closes all the books at once gently, with a resounding sense of satisfaction that there are the first steps of a journey being taken. He looks back to Thane. I promise. I shall share this gift. Yes. He will respond psychically back. Thank you. Share it with the world. will float over to the side of the airship and stare out into the clear parts of the night sky that have parted stars shining down Anyone else doing anything topside on Horizon's End? Just getting close to eat, taking care of him, doing what she does best. Farouk will be doing his best job of tending to everyone's needs. Anyone that needs a refreshment, collecting empty dishes, a big smile on his face as he kind of walks down into the galley and sees all the stuff that Kaivar and him have harvested, turning such a negative experience, 
something where he thought he was possibly going to lose one of his friends to now an evening meal on the way back home so much stress lately he's looking forward to the smell of the amber forge he kind of daydreams and disassociates off for a second closes his eyes he can smell both the business and the bakery side of that hearth and forge the heat that both melds metal and rises dough and bakes bread He understands that they're going to need some time in their own house alone. He misses the folks in the upper city, but he'll be counting the days for Ziva's birthday when he can come and stop by. And the sheer thought of what he's going to bring to this party and what else might be on the spread gives him a little extra pep in his step as he too is thinking about what can he get this budding young student that has so much promise. It becomes his sole focus inside of his head. A nice distraction from just surviving. The minutes pass like hours. And it's not long before you've lost yourself in all sorts of conversations and moments that you've been missing since you've been on this journey for so long. It's what it's like to get adjusted back to humanity again. Part that you've had to file away to be a warden, to be an adventurer, wanderer. And it's with the utmost joy that you see the city in the distance. Right before morning. Something you don't get to see all the time. The forges beneath the city lighting up the night sky. The city itself before dawn the calmer moments before all the active parts like an antique pocket watch begin to move in their own unison and organized form that makes up the greater chaos of this floating metropolitan city. As you guys all stare back at home for the first time in far, far too long. You all hear the screech of Parik in the distance.
Farouk rushes over to the edge of the airship and looks up. And you see him in his majestic golden eagle self soaring high above just as the sun begins to peak and rise above the clouds. As you kind of squint and look off over to the distance, it is not just Freak who is there in a strong formation you look and see a large V behind him sets of wings much larger than his As you see a massive contingent of Aarakocra from the plane of air fly overhead. As you count the literal number, that's the first V of Serval. As you look back at thousands that begin to pour into Stormforge. Fruk with a big smile on his face. There aren't just cultists and yon see Ben who share these skies. There's a few friends of mine that would have a word in this. And that is where we will pick up next week. I was so nestled scared. back home. I was so stressed. I thought we were getting invaded. I was like, what's happening? We have a long session. Like, oh, you hear a sentence. I was like, is this good? Is this bad? <laughs> and then it was Aracocra. And then it was Elemental Plane of Air. And then it was Dive into Stormforge. And there were thousands of them. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, like damn. It's way better like, use your gun now. You can use your gun. Like, use your gun now. <laughs> Also, Robert, precious. Th thank yes. you so much after we messed up our opportunity to do so. Thanks for plugging our shows in the middle of the episode. That was really... I hadn't even thought about that. It was just uh, fun really? to get... No, it was intentional. No, it was just fun to get to do. Never miss announcements ever again. <laughs> Why it's better in RP? That was, that was beautiful. That was it was just, really a, fun, really it was just beautiful. a fun opportunity to get to do. Uh... The multiverse is strong. Oh, and... It's getting big. Uh, what is it from Castlevania? The Infinite Corridor? Yes. 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 Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, oh, this is my vibe. It arrived. <laughs> uh, this, I... There are so many parts I want to go back and listen to. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Uh, I'm oh, just going to go and throw this out there, Drag. Thank you for making... Uh, well, for starters, thank you for completing the book, but also thank you for making that beautiful scene with me. I know we have built towards things with Callisto for a long time. Oh my god, it was the payoff, dude! Pleasure. It was the payoff! <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe you guys got the roll, too. Oh, that was was the the only was way I was going to ask you if you guys rolled the same number. Oh. And then I was like, hey, is it okay? Like, can we do it's that? Four. <laughs> four is our number. I know, yes. it was four. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfect. Oh. <sighs> so good. If there are any other announcements that you want to let folks know about, now would be the time <laughs> to do it.
I don't I don't think I, I have one uh, I don't remember the dates for it so I'm quickly looking on Twitter as we speak there we go um, I'm going to be on Science and Sorcery on April 12th at 7pm uh, UK time which I think is by then it's going to be what uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Pacific. I'm over on Science and Sorcery on Twitch. We're going to be in a. We're doing a one shot. Um, we're raising money for PCRF, so raising money for Palestine. Um, and it's Shiva, which is a, a horror teach RPG. And I haven't played a horror teach RPG in a while. So if you want to see me be horrified, <laughs> uh, check that out <laughs> on April 12th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. P- Pacific, or 7 p.m. UK time. Love it. Um, we missed this week because I was a little under the weather, but come check out Eden Falls every Tuesday on Wounded Warrior Project uh, to make up for the fact that we lost an episode this week. Uh, we're going to get two episodes uh, in two weeks' time, so uh, come along to that. Um, we're in the second half of our season now. It's building to a very, very explosive ending, uh, and our players are absolutely incredible. You can see the wonderful Becca Godsey, the incredible Justice Van Cho, the uh, <laughs> unparalleled Gabe Hicks, and the Evervescent. I just said. Who said Edward mine? Spence? No, no, no. I already said mine. <laughs> and the all right, you. Ed Spence. And the all right, Ed Spence. Yeah. <laughs> ah, the will be healthier, Ed Spence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just had it announced yesterday, but I did in a pre-recorded podcast that will also be visual uh, called Dungeons and Disabled. So. It is uh, GM or DM by Steve Saylor, who used to go by formerly uh, Blind Gamer Steve. And every single castmate has some form of disability, and we had the choice to be able to add a disability onto our characters that would affect them, or you know, we could not, but everybody chose one. So April 3rd, that will air, and you can find out more information at dungeonsanddisabled.com. Fun stuff. I'm very stoked for that. Yeah. It- so good. Steve's brilliant. Brilliant. Also, Sam put in the chat, because I just need to bring out because I think it's very funny. They're like, imagine the Stormforge group in the backwoods. <laughs> that would, that would, oh, that that would, would be make, so yeah. wild. I just started thinking of things. I was like, this is not this would not make sense. I, it would, I don't though. think it would work. <laughs> the fiends oh, just no. coming out and being like, nope. I'm on. Uh, I'm, I'm on. Uh, <laughs> well, still, imagine Ooh. those kids in Stormforge. Oh, <laughs> Ziva God. and those kids would wreak havoc in the storm. Yeah. I can imagine them being like a little rogues, rogues guild, like guild going Remember on. Remember, Colby, I have new friends. <laughs> Angie would have sent Stormforge <laughs> rocketing to Earth within the first two <laughs> days of being on there. She teams up with Yancey, Ben. <laughs> hey. Fane is very enamored with your leather jacket, Sam. <laughs> Just be like that. And if you're at PAX East this weekend, stop by the Voodoo Ranger Bar. I will be there. I will say hello. I will offer you a hard charge tea. If you need to charge your phone or just hang out, that is where we will be this weekend. Main floor in between the food trucks and uh, the entrances to the con itself. We got three times more room than we've ever had before. So hopefully it's a little less claustrophobic there because our area fills up very quick. Speaking of, <laughs> if you're around the Voodoo Ranger booth on Friday and Saturday around 2 p.m. local, you can see me at two different D and D tables Ooh, wait, <laughs> that we're setting D&D? up. Yeah, doing two different one shots in the Voodoo Ranger Lounge. Let's go! I'm so excited. I'm so happy for you. You get to play. It's gonna be awesome. Twice. What a gamer! What a gamer! <laughs> That'll be it for us this week. We'll see you all next week back in the Stormforge. Bring your bread. See you all then. <laughs> Bring your uh, uh, Bring your mayo. Bring your mayo. Oh, oh. Dad, <laughs> give me a sound. <laughs>
Oh, it's all there I was preserved. Gonna say zucchini bread, and you guys did the mayo again. Come on. I was gonna say zucchini bread, but we had to keep it true to Mayo Forge for this episode. Yeah, we had that's to. Fair. That's very fair. <laughs>